I'm going to jump in on the shot spotter question. I realize it was a two-part question. It was easy to take on the second. The City Inspector General report in August 2021 uh, wrote about shot spotter and said, quote, it changed the way some CPD members perceive and interact with people in areas with frequent alerts, like your area, as you mentioned, Mr. Sawyer, and that it could raise the specter of poorly informed decision making. With a show of hands, please, how many of you would support keeping shot spotter. Alderwoman King, Mr. Wilson. I'd like to tell you why. Mr. Vallis, we're not going to take wise. Thank you. You had an opportunity to answer that when we first, when we had the double question. Yep. Mayor Lightfoot and Alderman Sawyer. Thank you. <coughs> we'll now turn it over to Tiffany Walden with another question on public safety. This will be to Paul Vallis, Lori Lightfoot, and Congressman Chuy Garcia. Thank you, Marianne. Those who are currently and formerly incarcerated are still Chicagoans. What policies will your administration put in place to support them and their families? Paul Vallis. Great. Look, the first thing you have to do is create education and occupational training alternatives to incarceration so that judges now have the option, just as they have the option of, uh, of putting people in drug rehabilitation. And instead of being incarcerated, number one. And there's funding and, and, and both at the state and federal level do that. Second thing you have to do is you really have to open adult ed and occupational training centers. So when individuals are returning from incarceration, they're provided with a high, they're able to work on getting a high school diploma and occupationally trained. And you need to subsidize them. So it almost becomes a work study job because when people are incarcerated, people need to be working while at the same time being trained. And you also have to remove the obstacles to the, for them being hired in the first place, because there are so many ob obstacles, both in terms of the private sector as well as the city, to people formerly incarcerated Thank being, Thank being you, hired. Thank you, Mr. Vallis. Your life foot? Well, number one, you have to view it as a priority. That's why for the first time ever, uh, there's a person in the mayor's office who reports directly to me, who's from uh, the lived experience as a returning citizen, who focuses like a laser beam on creating uh, opportunities for a returning citizen. You cannot talk about public safety unless you create a path way home for these folks. So number one, you put the resources in, as we've done. We funded more uh, money for returning uh, residents than any other administration in the history of the city. Number two, you've got to break down the barriers for employment. What we know is they face a tremendous amount of challenges, and you've got to lead by example. We'll be making an announcement later this week that addresses that specific issue. You've got to work <laughs> with the stakeholders out there, like SAFER, like CARA, like John Howard, and other organizations, as we have done. Thank you, Mayor. Congressman Garcia. In order for returning citizens to have a shot at reintegrating into the community, they need a variety of things. They need to have support in the community where they're going to be released to ensure that they have access to housing, that they have access to nutrition, that there are wraparound services like mental health and drug dependency counseling as well. Working with Safer Foundation, one of the leading organizations on the West Side and other places with the Revolution Workshop, these are organizations that have modeled the way for effective reintegration into the community. We need to invest Invest because when we invest in these folks, then the likelihood of success is much greater. Thank you, Congressman. We're going to move on now to education, and I'd like to start with a hand raised question for all of you. First and foremost, raise your hand if you would close any Chicago public schools. Will you close any Chicago public schools? Raise your hand if you will. That is a it's a yes or no question. Raise your hand if you say you will close public schools. Well, but see, I don't think you, that's a okay. fair question. Okay, well, yeah, that's your I opinion. If that's... Yeah. No, everyone says they will not close a public school. Okay, moving on. Would you change or reform the selective enrollment process? If you would, raise your hand. We have Jay Mall Green. We have Sophia King, we have Cam Buckner, we Everybody, have Brandon yeah. Johnson, everyone, but I, let me just keep oh. going. Uh, Paul Vallis, Lori Lightfoot, Alderman Sawyer, and Congressman Garcia. <clears throat> Almost everyone. I should say who wouldn't. That would be better. And do you or have your children attended Chicago Public Schools? We have Congressman Garcia. Six grandchildren. And six <laughs> grandchildren. They count. And we have Alderman Sawyer, Paul Vallis, Brandon Johnson, Sophia King, and Jay Mulgrew.
Thank you very much. All right, guys, we're going to stick with education. And, and this is an old topic. I've been talking about this for years on WVON, resourcing out schools on the south and west sides of Chicago. This is an old topic. I talked to a school teacher who left a south side school, went to a north side school and said that it was ridiculous mm-hmm. how supported the schools are on the north side opposed to the schools on the south side. She came back and told the teachers, you guys are working too hard. How would you correct that? And this is an old question that everybody has a plan for. But how would you do that? Resource South Side and West Side schools, and how can we hold you accountable to that? Starting with? All right, and we're going to start in ballot order with Jay Maul Green. Thank you, Mary. Yeah, no, this is such an important issue. Uh, kids are being failed each and every day in our public school system. Uh, a lot of it is our funding structure. One of the things is we must change um, the structure from enrollment-based formula to needs-based formula so that every uh, school has the investment that it needs. We also must make sure that the money that's coming down actually reach the classrooms and the schools. Thirty thousand dollars is earmarked for kids, but it's not coming into uh, the classrooms. And and a lot of the privatizers in the schools are making millions from those who uh, handle the food and the cleanliness of buildings. But our students are not getting the wraparound services that they need. They're in 40 kids a classroom. It's a travesty. So we got to change the form instru- uh, formula structure. We have to make sure that we refine uh, the selective enrollment. Uh, structure as well and make sure that we give a high quality education at every school in the city. And Alderman King. Yes, as as a former teacher and somebody who created a small school uh, on the south side, I know more about what to do about education. Uh, First of all, I would increase selective enrollment with a neighborhood component, much like Kenwood High School, which is a thriving school with a neighborhood high school component, seventh and eighth grade selective in component. We should have schools like that all throughout the city to energize our neighborhoods. We also need to bring the trades back into our schools in a very meaningful way, 11th and and 12th grade with uh, um, tech as well so we can prepare our kids for the future. We can prepare for college and the trades. We also need to incentivize our teachers. Two professions that we throw everything at that we're unable to solve, teachers and police. We have to incentivize them to stay in Chicago. State Rep. Buckner. Yeah, so my son is 14 months old, so he's not yet a CPS kid, but I'm looking forward to the day that he becomes the third generation of CPS children in our family. Um, Matt, the things you talked about are very clear. My mother spent 33 years as a Chicago public school teacher, both on the north and the south side, at Louisa May Alcott, one of the most resourced schools in this city, in Lincoln Park, and then at Scott Joplin in Auburn Gresham, a school that has had, has had issues uh, for many years. And so uh, we do have to be very smart about resources and funding. Jay Maul is right uh, about the funding situation, but the truth is that the state has already passed that law six years ago. The problem is that <clears throat> Chicago does not adhere to it. The state gives money to CPS based on needs, and CPS does not, therefore, give the money to the schools in the district uh, in the same way. We, we have to change that. We've also got to stop the privatization of CPS. <clears throat> you know what's going on with the custodial services and other things. Thank you, Thank you sir. Willie Wilson? Well, I think you've got to get cooperation involved in terms of as related to those schools, trade, things like that, so they can develop those particular kids in school. You can where they don't get the information from. How are they going to graduate? You got kids right now graduating from school can't read or write. So where, where are you going? Even when you get out of school. We must integrate the, the, the school system with the proper teachers that reflect the community. And lastly, uh, the, the, the mayor should not use our kid to put a re-election. Get all that stuff out of here. You know? So those are things that should not be allowed, period. All right. Well, let's give the mayor an opportunity to respond to that direct. If you want, if you don't want to, we'll move on. I, I'm not going to respond to okay. the things that Mr. Wilson says. He's uninformed. Um, things he says aren't true. That's not worth wasting everybody else's time. Okay. Well, I think she got a problem. Okay. <laughs> Commissioner, problem. Commissioner Johnson, former school teacher. Yeah, look, as a Chicago public school teacher, I, I can tell you what those disparities look like. Um, I have three children who are in Chicago public schools, and we don't have a neighborhood school on the west side of Chicago that offers orchestra. That's one of the reasons why our oldest is a student at Kenwood, and we send our other two um, children uh, to Portage Park. Look, to 
State Representative Cam Buckner's point, I was a part of the organizing effort to provide a new funding formula to shift the dynamics at Chicago Public Schools because CPS, under the leadership of this mayor, has <coughs> refused to adhere to that law. There's $1 billion being left on the table because of it. Sustainable community schools, we're going to expand those. We're going to make sure that CTA actually allows for children to ride free so that children don't have to look for a ride to school. We're going to make sure that we actually have child care for everyone. All right. Mayor Lightfoot, would you like to respond to that? Ms. I don't know what um, Mr. Uh, uh, Commissioner Johnson is even talking about. The fact of the matter is 95 percent of the monies that we get are going into our school classrooms. Uh, and we're making sure that um, <coughs> schools are staying open, that we're responding to the needs of our students and our parents by keeping the schools open. He fought to keep schools closed. Mr. Vallis, this is right up Which your Which one lane. is he, Paul or me? What? <laughs> yeah, that's he, true. He, he would be you, sir. Okay, Brandon. You, the executive director, one of the uh, executive leaders of the CTU. Right. So then I get to respond to that. Yes, sir, go All ahead. Right. So look, the bottom line okay, is, is this. Hey, back up, uh, <laughs> please. No, look. You're next, though. No, we're family. Look, we can have disagreement. I come from a family of 10. We fight all the time over the Thanksgiving menu, and it's the same <laughs> menu every year. The bottom line is this. You won't have to sue my administration like you've had to sue this current administration because it refuses to actually implement state guidelines to protect children um, who are either with special, um, who, who are part of the special education uh, department or children who are uh, English language learners. The fact of the matter is I'm the only person who has put together a budget plan that calls for investments. And we Mayor, do that without you, raising property taxes. You will, you will get your time. Mr. Vallis, Look, let I me give you like a perspective. You there's, what, 126 high schools and there's six select enrollment high schools. So, And incidentally, when I opened four of those select enrollment high schools, they all had neighborhood set-asides. That included Walter Payne, they had neighborhood set-asides in Cabrita Green. Uh, in addition to putting magnet schools like and magnet programs in 15 neighborhood high schools like the International Baccalaureate programs. Look. $30,000 per kid we spend in Chicago Public Schools. It's not getting into the classroom for whatever reason. I'm not faulting anybody here. Why isn't it getting into the classroom? 95% is not getting into the classroom. Ask a teacher if they feel that they're getting $30,000 a child. So the bottom... How, how would you get it there as mayor, sir? Well, you know, first of all, you would radically decentralize the central office and you would basically deprivatize the services they provided like Aramart and Sodexo. And what you would do is these these district wide programs, you would collapse and push the money down to the local schools. We need community schools where the local school councils working with the principals are empowered to get as much of the money as possible so they can determine the priorities on a community community individual school by individual individual school basis and that's how we did it in the 90s and that's why that's why schools were open through the dinner hour and schools were open through the summer and why we were putting magnet programs in neighborhood Thank schools you. mayor lightfoot so the, so the question is how do we uh, account for the resources yeah. on schools in the south and west side number one is we have to get more money from springfield whether it's a cps school whether it's a charter uh, whether it's an option school we need more resources from Springfield. Chicago Public Schools is simply not getting its fair share of the resources. Um, people in Springfield think they solved that problem. They have not. Uh, we also have to establish a baseline of equity, which is exactly what CEO Martinez is doing, so that no matter where you are, that you have a baseline of math and science and after school and arts. Those are the things that make school interesting and vibrant, and we're doing that now. We also have to create more opportunities for businesses to connect up with those schools, um, and we're doing that now. For example, on February 27th, we're hosting our second annual trade fair where 3,000 CPS kids Thank are going to be introduced to the trade. Thank you. Alderman Sawyer. Well, this is the problem, Matt. Um, I think it's a misconception of people, particularly people in authority, that equate equality with equity. They're two different things. I have schools on the south side in my ward that have to have washing machines because kids come to school soiled. They have to have extra counselors there because we're talking about prostitution and drug dealing amongst grammar school students. And these same students are expected to equate with the other students around the, the, uh, the system to uh, math and science and reading and all these things. That's not equity. That's not really equity. That's equality. They're getting the same amount. Everybody's getting the $30,000, so they say. But we're not making true investments in schools that really need it. Really going down and driving into why these kids are coming unclean. Why are we not working with the parents? Why are we not working with everyone to make sure a child is getting a quality Thank education? You. Thank you, Alderman. And Congressman Garcia. So under-resourced schools are just 
the spiral that's occurred, especially in black Chicago communities over many decades, a disinvestment. People leave the neighborhoods, the school enrollment drops, and it's hard to find things working in those schools. You need investment in those communities. That's why I talk about comprehensive community uh, development. That's why I talk about needing to invest heavily and intensely in those communities to turn it around. I've been working in Congress to try to increase the number of uh, teachers of color, which are also essential in many of those schools. We need to do that urgently, but not much will change unless we begin to invest equitably and intensely in those communities. Thank you, Congressman. We now like to move to a question about home ownership and housing. A WBEZ City Bureau analysis of six years of lending by major banks in Chicago found for every one dollar that those banks lent in majority white areas, they lent just 12 cents in black areas. What will you do to address that disparity? We're going to start over here with Congressman Chuy Garcia. <clears throat> As a, a member, a former member of the uh, Financial Services um, Committee in Congress, I work to bring uh, more housing opportunities to Chicago. We passed the bill out of the house. It would have been a $150, $150 million, billion dollar investment. It would have transformed, provided opportunities to modernize public housing. We're talking about lending. We're talking Correct. about money. Correct. I'm going, yes, and, and I am addressing that. The historic disinvestment uh, that the Community Reinvestment Act sought to change and to ensure that there's more lending and that there aren't the discriminatory practices that have been very common in Chicago. Chicago produced the Community Reinvestment Act as mayor and someone who's worked in the field of housing. I would work to pressure banks to be more equitable in their lending, to participate in initiatives to invest in the disinvested communities in Chicago. Thank you, Congressman Alderman Sawyer. Yes, you start off by uh, being partners with lenders and local lending institutions and banks, making sure that we can have a backstop to assist those, making sure that there are uh, those that are applicants in getting housing, attend pub, uh, housing classes, attend these classes that are very well, uh, they're all over the city. I've seen them. I've actually sponsored quite a few of my day at the, uh, in the sixth ward. You want to make sure people are attending these things and they're very informational and they end at the end of the day with working directly with lenders. Uh, what we should do is be a partner with those lenders as a city, making sure we're making key investments uh, to backstop so they can maybe relax some of the onerous restrictions sometimes that lenders have, particularly smaller lenders, smaller home based lenders do. All right. Thank you, Alderman. Mm -hmm. Mayor Lightfoot. Well, you don't put up with it. Um, every single year, there's another study that comes out that talks about the big banks in Chicago along the lines you said. Number one is I have worked with um, my uh, mayor's groups, whether it's the U.S. Conference of Mayors, the African-American Mayors Association, to call these banks on the carpet and demand now, not later, that they change their practices. You know, we were supposedly uh, a redlining was eliminated, but that's effectively what these big banks are doing and not lending in our community, not having branch banking, not op opening up lines of credit for our small businesses. So in the meantime, while Congress isn't doing its job and Congressman, you've got to do better. While they're not doing their job, what we have done is pump hundreds of millions of dollars into those communities to help support um, home ownership and small Thank businesses. Thank you, Mayor. I'm going to let the Congressman respond. Thank you. Uh, the mayor likes to say all kinds of things. And fortunately, most people in Chicago don't believe anything she says. With respect to her signature program, Invest Out West, it's mostly hypothetical numbers. She talks about millions and billions even. And where do you <coughs> see it anywhere on the south or the southwest side? Mostly but absent. Congressman, AWOL. where are you and why aren't you doing something? I just responded. Um, I, just responded I just responded. I just responded to your question. Mayor, Mayor Thank you very Mayor much. Lightfoot. Mayor Lightfoot, we're asking the questions. Thank you. I'm Please finished. continue. Thank you. I, I, I'm finished. The point was that a lot of what she talks about is simply you can't see it. It's all hypothetical. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do you, would you like to respond to that? What I would, I would do is say, Congressman, come along with me to the 10 communities where we are making a tangible difference in concrete ways. I know you don't know black Chicago that well. And I, li I live on the west side, man. Okay. I live on the west side. Thank you side. very much. We're I live on. in K-Town. Maybe move you on. don't come there from We're Novich Square. We're going to move on to Paul Vallis. Look, very simply, the, uh, 
The city has tremendous leverage of, uh, on all the financial institutions, how they invest, uh, who they have associations with. I mean, if the city wants to prioritize breaking down these l lending barriers, the city can do it if they have the will. And I'm not suggesting that attempts are not being made to do that. I'm just pointing out the city has enormous power. Second, we have this billion dollar plus TIF fund. Why aren't we allocating TIF monies in a way that, in effect, produces affordable housing with a focus on local ownership and local wealth accumulation? Third, we have t tens of thousands of vacant residential facilities in some phase of, you know, housing court or whatever. Why can't we turn those over to community-based organizations to provide uh, affordable housing and special targeted housing for individuals who are uh, returning citizens and uh, women you. who are Thank the victims you. of domestic Thank violence? You, Mr. Vallis. Yeah, one of the first things that I did on the County Board of Commissioners, I passed the Just Housing Ordinance that eliminated discrimination against those who uh, were formerly incarcerated seeking housing. There's a really pretty dramatic st stat. Black families that make $100,000 a year or more live in less safe communities than white families that make less than $30,000 a year. Look, the bottom line is you have to invest. My wife and I, when we purchased our first home, the house was $150,000. We made it a combined income of $80,000. We were the richest people in our family. We needed two government <clears> programs <throat> to help us with down payment assistance. As mayor of the city of Chicago, we're going to rehab the homes. We're going to make sure the people in the neighborhood rehab them. We're going to put them back on the tax rolls, and we're going to make them available to working middle class families so that they can have a pathway to generational wealth. Thank you, Commissioner. Mr. Wilson? Well, for, first of all, I will use my, <clears throat> my business experience. Leverage the bank that you're doing business with in the city of Chicago. One requirement would be that you have to diversify the people who you're lending money to. That's what the requirement would be. You could get those things done. But even after you do that, I would not raise real estate taxes so high to run the family out of their home. They can get a home. But sometimes real estate taxes go up so high, you can't even afford the note, you know. So we have to put more than just a bank lending the money. We have to put safe checks in place to make sure they can keep a home. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Representative Buckner. Most of my colleagues are not answering the question. Let me be very clear about this. You asked about lending and financial institutions and their, their racist practices. The racist practices of banks who were bailed out in 08 and bailed out again in 2020 and why they are not uh, operating within our communities. Listen, it is the bully pulpit of the fifth floor of City Hall. It is the mayor's office that has to set the tone. The mayor has to stand up and say, if you cannot do business with all of Chicago, you won't be doing business with any of Chicago. That's what I will do in the Buckner administration. What we also have to do is make sure that we deal with the racism in the appraisal process, because what we're seeing is just a, a rehashing of old things that has made our communities <coughs> less safe and less economically stable. An elder woman king. I agree uh, with Representative Buckner. I would leverage the fifth floor to make sure that those banks that are lending more equitably are rewarded. I would also use opportunity zones to grow our community and our housing. I would use incentives to uh, back by uh, city bonds uh, to loan to teachers, other first responders to move into those communities so that they could have uh, no interest loans, uh, down payment assistance, so that we can truly grow our communities and invite people back to the communities. That's what I would do, leveraging the fifth floor to do it. Thank, Thank you. you, Alder Woman. Jay Green. Well, I'm the only person on this stage that actually fought this issue. When it came up in 2020, I worked with Linda Lutton and City Bureau on these stats, and we went and fought Chase Bank, who was the worst bank on this list. And we made them give back a billion dollars over the next five years uh, in home loans and created massive jobs opportunities. What we're going to do is we're going to hold banks accountable. We got a $28 billion enterprise, and if uh, our, our money is in those banks, and if you are not investing in the neighborhoods, we're going to take it out. We're also going to create a public bank of our own so that we can invest and have our own economic engine and all of the money that comes back to the Bank of Chicago will go back to city services. And we're going to use a single family mortgage bond to, uh, uh, to back home loans on a city level and give down payment assistance and closing costs to those folks who have been redlined to right our wrongs. We're going to do it in a, you, under Jay a brand Laundry. administration. And we're going to take a quick break. Be sure to join us when we come back with more of the Mayor Forum. My pet.
passion for politics goes back to probably being a teenager. Our kitchen table was always a discussion, perhaps maybe more of a debate. I've been on the political beat for years, working to hold leaders accountable. Think of all the decisions that are made by those who are elected, whether it's your tax bill, whether it's COVID, whether it's schools. Politics affects every day of your life. Good morning. Welcome to today. Nice to have you with us. Good morning, Chicago. Thanks for starting your day here on NBC5. You know, Al was just in Chicago. What's your favorite thing about Chicago? I love Chicago food. We have the same mission, the same reason that we get up in the morning. We start with hard news and give you the stuff you need to know and also something that'll make you feel good. We try to balance it out. We've got the bases covered locally, and we know that you guys will take it away. We know this is a partnership. Every day needs NBC5. Every day needs today. One of the things about Chicago, and I've lived here since 1977, is that you earn trust in Chicago. This is a storm that is not weakening at this point. It's important to put your trust in our NBC5 storm team because we truly care about you. We care about your safety. Don't put yourself in harm's way. We're on the air here to protect you. We're not just up there on television. We're there to give you the information to keep you and your family safe. Now you can watch your local news, weather, and more free with our 24-7 streaming news channel on NBCChicago.com. Watch whenever, wherever. Stream our nonstop news. Available now on NBCChicago.com. Michael Jordan. 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 He's still Michael Jordan.